connect as standard, but also full LED lighting, the LED headlights, taillights, daytime running lights, all standard on the car, as well as rear view camera. As we go up the lines, we have a number of other premium features, um, such as panoramic sunroof. On our SEL trims, you will find the full suite of driver's assistance, um, the full gamut, as well as the digital cockpit, the Beats, and the Beats audio, as well as um, um, a second uh, or a protector version of the headlight as well. I will note, however, in terms of driver's assistance, from the SE on up, front assist, so that's forward collision warning with autonomous emergency braking and blind spot monitor are standard on the car from the SE on up. Forward collision braking with, I'm sorry, forward collision warning with autonomous emergency braking and blind spot monitor. Those are standard from the SE trim on up. Absolutely standard. The SEL and SEL premium have the full suite of driver's assistance systems. However, on our Jetta S, our entry car, <coughs> four collision warning of autonomous emergency braking and blind spot monitor are available in a driver's assistance package. So when you couple that package with the S, say a manual S, that allows you to get a front assist and blind spot monitor, two of really the, the key features customers are looking for, under $19,000. No other OEM can do that at that price point right now. So really making this the people's car and bringing driver's assistance to the masses, at least. That is our hope with this car. But uh, it's a really strong, strong thing. We're very excited to actually be able to, to bring that to everybody. Now I would be remiss in terms, of, in terms of value. If you look across the board at our pricing and comparing it to the Mark VI in, in every single instance, Prices have actually come down and the content has significantly increased on the car, making this a huge, huge value improvement that we've been able to do through efficiencies of MQB and also uh, limitations or keeping complexity to a minimum of the car and focusing only on the North American market. It has really allowed us to really do what we really wanted to do with this car and uh, make it a, a huge value story for the U.S. customer. And speaking of value, I mentioned before Beats Audio, which we're very excited to have in the car, and it, it, it is part of bringing a huge value, not only to the brand, but also to Jetta, and to talk with you now about that is Asim Khan. And, uh, sorry, I'm gonna run a quick video first. Hi, my name is Luke Wood, and I'm the president of Beats by Dr. Dre. Thank you so much for taking the time to hear our story. It really starts with two people. The first is a guy named Jimmy Iovine. Jimmy Iovine was from Brooklyn, New York. When he was 21 years old, he went to work in the studio as a second engineer, which is someone who's just above the guy making tea in the studio. One day he was working on a session, and things didn't go so well with the first engineer, and the artist said, you know what, why don't you step up and why don't you engineer the record? And that artist happened to be John Lennon. He went from that session to go work with Bruce Springsteen, then he worked as a producer with Patti Smith on Easter, went on to produce Belladonna by Stevie Nicks, Dire Straits, U2, really some of the most impactful records between 1974 and 1990. The other major player in the story is of course Dr. Dre himself. As you probably know, Dr. Dre started a group called N.W.A. He was not only a rapper and a songwriter of N.W.A., but he was also the engineer, the producer, the mixer, and the Sonic Vision. Shortly after starting Interscope Records in 1990, Jimmy Iovine was fortunate to meet Dr. Dre, who came to play him a record called The Chronic. Jimmy instantly fell in love and signed Dr. Dre, and the album came out a year later. And as partners, they both saw the same problem in sound. They looked at the music that their kids were listening to, and they looked at the music that all their consumers were listening to, and they realized, wait, they're not hearing what we hear in the studio. Headphones really hadn't changed in 20 years. They were still built to play back the exact same records as when they were tuned in 1976, but sound had changed. That's because of technology and innovation. Digital changed everything. Digital sampling, digital recording. So if you think of a song like the Black Eyed Peas, Boom Boom Pow, right? Hear that bass drum, boom, boom, boom. That's a tuned bottom end. The melody, the hook of the song is a tuned kick drum. You could have done that with analog. It was a digital trick and it was unique to that platform. 
And that was the genesis of Beats. And so the two of them got together and started Beats Electronics. They had a moment and they said, we know how to address the problem. Let's create something that allows every consumer to hear music the way we hear it in the studio. And the first headphone, which was the studio, really was a game changer. When people think about Beats headphones, they say, okay, you guys are dressed the bottom end, but then they think we didn't address the top. The greatest singers in the world, Jimmy and Dre have been in the studio with, Bono, Stevie Nicks. These are people that was always about the words. When we listen to a record, we think, where do the vocals sit and how does the bottom end make us feel and how do they communicate together? And it was really a combination of those things that define the basic tenets of how we've driven the brand to this day. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Awesome Khan, I'm Director of Product Management for Beats Audio. Uh, I also want to welcome to the stage uh, Rick Aiken, who's a Product Manager on my team. Super excited to talk to you guys today a little bit about our integration with Volkswagen uh, for the 2019 Jetta and a little bit about our partnership with Volkswagen globally. Um, when we started contemplating this partnership a couple years back, you know, one of the things that we really started to think about is where do we want to take our sound and the vision that you saw in the video and extend that into the automotive space. Sound is important in so many different environments and we were talking about it yesterday uh, at dinner and it is still one of the last places where everyone listens to music. It is a sanctuary for so many people and it's one where we intend to get music to where we believe the artists really intended. Um, whether it's on your commute, uh, a long drive, any different moment in your life, music has an important place in your car. It's not just an uh, object to get you from point A to B. It's an emotional experience and one which we, from a product standpoint and what we do in hardware, already intend to bring to Volkswagen. We have in, an incredible amount of cultural heritage, as you saw from the video, but we are a youthful brand. And I think that's how we're going to intend to partner with Volkswagen is to really kind of target a youthful customer. That doesn't mean just a millennial buyer. It means everybody. There's music lovers in all of us, and our intention with this system is to really build something that everyone can truly love, and that can extend audio experiences from jazz, hard rock, punk, to rap, hip hop, pop, electronica. It's the full gambit of things, and that's what really Beats represents today. To speak a little bit more about what we're doing actually in the car and kind of our technical integration, we've prepared a short video uh, to help align kind of how you guys can frame what we're doing in the automobile with Volkswagen. At the core of Beats by Dr. Dre is our mission, bringing people the music they love as the artist intended. Enter two music industry veterans who knew how music was supposed to sound. Jimmy Iovine had a recording studio near a radio transmitter. After recording, mixing, and mastering the music, he knew how every note fit together, but he'd only heard it on his speakers. He'd press a record, give it to the tower, then drive around in his car to listen to the song how people would hear it on the radio. If he didn't like it, he'd remix it and repeat to capture the sound artists create in the studio. Dr. Dre was doing something very similar. He'd record, mix, and master, then get a cassette and play it in a car with the subwoofers that he knew were getting more popular. If it wasn't perfect, remix and repeat. Whatever it took to get the sound right. And we have to tune the car to our specs and we want to make sure that it sounds right. And Dre and I do it ourselves. Yeah, I played it. Patty Smith. Acoustic engineers joined forces with the partner design teams to select the right speakers, materials, and software, making sure everything is in the right place. After the design and build, our acoustic team tunes and adjusts to our signature Beats sound, adding the emotion of the music experience back into your commute. Every part of Beats by Dr. Dre is about taking you from where you are, your phone, your car, your desk at work, and transporting you into the studio to hear the songs you love as the artist intended. So uh, 
Good morning. Uh, the idea of reproducing the studio sound is exactly the approach we took when collaborating with Volkswagen on the premium audio system for the Jetta. I'll run through a few of the specs pretty quickly. It's a 400 watt system powering seven speakers. Um, what we're you know, engineering this vehicle for is to deliver that studio sound quality, um, so what the artist intended. Um, we have a 400 eight channel uh, amp, 400 watt eight channel amp, um, two uh, one inch high fidelity tweeters in your A pillars, and two six and a half full range speakers in your doors. And um, that's really gonna help set up the car um, for our tuning approach, which, uh, it, which is to have mono content, um, so you're able to hear a voice in the center of the car, and then the backup speakers or drums, um, guitar to hear off in actual places. You want that to be a wide stage um, around eye level. And then we're using two six and a half broadband speakers and the rear doors as support. So that should give you a level of envelopment within the car. Um, and then we have a six and a half dual coil subwoofer, um, an 11 liter box that sits in the spare wheel well. Um, so you keep the convenience of their trunk, but you still get the low frequency uh, response that you look for in this car. Um, it's slightly delayed so that you uh, hear that base information up in the front of the vehicle. Um, and so when we tune this vehicle, um, we tune it for that approach. What a producer would see um, when producing an album. Um, and then uh, just to finally touch on this, we, uh, it's tuned by musicians and artists and to deliver that music as the artist intended. And we also put together a little playlist in the car. Um, and love for all you guys here. We think it'll help you guys enjoy uh, the system itself. Um, it's a little more contemporary, some things that you probably haven't heard near the end. We have some rock and, and some classical music on there as well. Um, and please don't be afraid to uh, you know, really test out the system when you, when you give the car a drive. And I'll uh, pass it off to Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, everyone. Um, so if anybody has got any questions, feel free to ask now. Um, if you don't, it's time to go and drive. So if anybody's got any questions, we can take them. If not, 